وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We begin as always by praising Allah Azza wa Jal and by sending peace and blessings and salutations and asking Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his family and his companions. We are talking about the Muslim family. And this short course which is brought to you by al Madrasa al umariyah is a course which is going to cover all the aspects of the Muslim family insha'Allah ta'ala. And as we said after we did a general introduction to the Muslim family and some of the ayat which have been uh, revealed uh, in the Quran and some of the ahadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about the Muslim family and then we went on to talk about marriage. And we've reached the point where we are talking about the characteristics of the ideal husband. Now at this point, I think it's really beneficial that we bring back in the hadith of Umm Zarr. And if you remember, I had quoted to you the hadith of Umm Zarr, a part of it, just the part that relates to Umm Zarr and Abu Zarr and their family. I had quoted it to you in a previous lesson. And I quoted it to you from the point of just showing kind of like an example of a Muslim family where everything's going right, the wife is happy with the husband, the husband is happy with the wife and the children and the parents and the, you know, even the servant girl in the house, everything is wonderful. So we gave that as an example. But I want to come back to the hadith. Now, I'm not going to give an explanation of everything in the hadith to the sense, in the sense of how uh, I might have done in previous videos or in other lectures where I might have gone through the hadith from you know, beginning to end word by word. But what I'm going to do, inshallah, is we're going to go through the whole hadith and we're going to look at it from the angle of the ideal husband. I, we're going to look at what those women had to say about their husbands and what we can learn about that in terms of uh, how a husband should be or shouldn't be. Because it's it's an absolute gold mine. It's an amazing resource of uh, eleven women who don't conceal anything about their husbands, tell everything that there is to tell, and you see a lot of the positives and negatives about the husband. And these are positives and negatives that were affirmed by Islam. I that that Islam agreed that they are you know things which are either positive or negative. Uh, depending on what it is. So it is something where we can learn a lot about what a husband should be like and what a husband shouldn't be like. So this hadith is the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha annaha qalat jalasa ihda ashrata imra'ah fata'ahadna wa ta'aqadna an la yaktumna min akhbari azwajihinna shay'a. Aisha narrated that 11 women sat together, i.e. they sat, they came together in a majlis, in a gathering, and they agreed and they promised each other that they would not conceal anything from their, or anything about their husbands, positive or negative. Now, generally speaking, we talk about just just so that we understand the ruling here. It's not generally permissible for a woman to inform what her husband is like uh, in this kind of situation uh, because that would be riba, it would be backbiting, unless she's going to a qadi to complain or a counselor or something like that. It wouldn't be permissible. But here it's not, uh, if you imagine Aisha is telling the Prophet وسلم, about 11 women a story which happened, the Prophet ﷺ doesn't know those 11 women or their husbands. And it's, it's she's telling something that happened. So that's not a matter of, it's not uh, that Aisha is doing anything wrong. Uh, and of course, the Prophet ﷺ wouldn't have let her 
continue if she was doing anything wrong. But just to clarify that if it was a, a real life situation that happened today, it wouldn't be allowed for a woman to tell the secrets of how her husband is unless she has one of the reasons which makes that permissible. Like she's speaking in front of a qadi or she had to go to ask a fatwa or something like that. But here, when it says that they won't conceal anything from what their husbands did, that means positive or negative. So they're going to mention the positives and they're going to mention the negatives, even though the negatives are, are quite a lot in this hadith. But we can take from those as well, because we can reverse them around and say, well, if that's a negative, what would, what do we take from that? What is the positive uh, from it? قالت الأولى زوجي لحم جمل غث على رأس جبل وعر لا سهل فيرتقى ولا سمين فينتقل The first one she said my husband is like the meat of a tough lean camel on a high mountain He's not easy so that you can reach him and he's not meaty so that you can bring it down or it's not meaty any the meat of the camel is not samin it's not fatty so that it's worth bringing down so what is this what does she mean and what can we benefit from this in the description of the ideal husband first of all she's criticizing her husband this is them she's criticizing him, she's complaining about him, she's got nothing good to say about him. She said he is lahmu jamal, he's the meat of a camel. So she didn't mention the meat of a lamb, which might be soft and, you know, easy to eat. Meat of a camel, it's tough, it's chewy. So he's rough and tough, he's a tough guy, he's got a tough personality, you know, like, you have to, you have to be patient with him. And he's not just the meat of a camel, He's a meat of a camel, which is ghath, it's lean, there's not even any meat on it. It's like you, you have no, it's like a thin camel that doesn't have any proper meat on it. So what little good is there is tough. What little good is there, it's tough. It's, 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 not, it's not nice. It's not what people would wish for. So this indicates, first of all, that his akhlaq is He's got poor akhlaq, poor manners, and that he's, he's tough to get hold of, tough to reach, tough to interact with, uh, tough to live with. And then even when she makes the effort, she said, لا سهل فيرتقى It's not easy to get to him. So he's not accessible. He's not accessible. And that doesn't mean necessarily he's not in the house. He, that could be one thing because there's two ways that a man might not be accessible in one that he's never home and the other one is not that he's never home but it's just you can't get you can't get reach him from a, an, on an emotional level you go to speak to him you can't get to him on an emotional level you just can't reach him he's tough to get to tough to get through to we might say in English can't get through to him ولا سمين فينتقل and he's not got enough semina in here. She's comparing him to the meat of the camel. It's not fat enough that it's worth bringing it down. Meaning, when I make all of that effort to get to him, and I make all of that effort to reach him on that top of that high mountain, like he's sitting on top of his throne, and he's really rough, really tough person to deal with, that even when I get all, I make that huge effort for him, and I make such a big effort for him, that big effort is wasted because there's no benefit to be had anyway. It's like climbing on top of a tall mountain. You might say, look, I would climb a tall mountain if the meat at the top of the mountain was really good quality. So I could say I, I really made a big effort and I got all the way to the top of the mountain and I got this really good quality meat. But I got all the way to the top of the mountain and the meat was tough, and lean, there was barely any meat on it, and what meat was on it was, was tough to eat. So she's comparing her husband like that. She makes a big effort for him, and that's one of the things that is, is, is from the Sunnah of the Prophet as it relates to the wife, we're gonna to come to that later on. She makes a big effort for her husband. But the effort that she makes for her husband, first of all, it requires a huge amount of effort from her to get any response from him. It's like climbing a tall mountain. 
And when she makes that effort, it's not worth it because there's not anything good to be had at the end of it. Reverse that and look at the ideal husband. First of all, he should be sahal. He should be easy going. He shouldn't be tough. And he should be easy going and he should be soft. So being soft and being easy going. And he should be accessible. Now, traveling is something that sometimes people have to do. And typically, many times a man has to travel, perhaps for work, perhaps for other things that he has to do and obligations that Allah has placed upon him. And that's absolutely fine. But he should be accessible, meaning when he's home, he's available, he's reachable. His wife can get through to him on an emotional level and physical level and so on. And when she makes that effort for him, he makes it worth her while. So she climbs that tall mountain, whether she made a big effort in how she looks or she made a big effort in how she behaves. She really tried to correct some of maybe her faults and she's working really hard, trying really hard. He should make it worth her while. Because why would she ever correct herself if he doesn't correct himself? And that's why it's narrated from some of the companions of the Prophet wasallam about the man who makes an effort in his appearance so that because he requires or he expects the same from his wife. And we're going to come to that later on, inshallah. So a man makes an effort in his, his appearance because he wants his wife to do the same. So how would he expect her to correct her manners and her behavior and make such a big effort with him when she makes that effort and gets nothing back? So she's like, she's climbed a tall mountain, but she only found tough, lean, little uh, meat, nothing worthwhile for her to make such a big effort. So what's gonna happen? She's gonna stop making the effort completely. So he should be easygoing, he should be soft, he should be accessible, and he should make it worth her while. That when she does something and makes a big effort for him, he shows appreciation, so he should be appreciative. If we move on to the next uh, part of the hadith, قالت الثانية زوجي لا أبث خبرا إني أخاف أن لا أذرا إن أذكره أذكر عجره وبجره The second one, she said, my husband I am not going to go into detail to tell you everything about him. Why? Is it because she's scared of Allah? Is it because she's scared that she might say something wrong? She said, if I start, I will not be able to stop. I think if I start telling you about him, I will not be able to stop the whole gathering will be taken up by his faults. If I mention him, I will mention his public and private failings. What can we take from this? First of all, she mentions her husband completely negatively. She said, if I sit here telling you about him, I'm not going to stop. You won't, none of you, will, other people will have a turn. All of you are going to have to wait while I finish a long, long, long discussion about all of his faults. But here, what I wanted to focus on is the ujar and the bujar. So that is the open faults and the hidden faults. So here, and, and maybe that's not, I'm, I'm kind of reaching when I use this for the hadith, but I'm just using it as like a placeholder to mention this to you, inshallah. That how people are in public and private. So you get some people who in public are actually really good, but privately, if you were to speak to their wife or their family and they were to be honest, they would probably say the same thing. I think if I start talking, I will not stop. And that's a terrible you know, characteristic for a husband to have, to be really good in public and to be really bad in private. And... Even worse than that is what she mentioned about her husband, that he's got all the faults in public and all the faults in, in private. And that's even worse. But just here, I just wanted to use it as kind of like a placeholder because we're talking about the sifat, the characteristics of the ideal husband, just to mention that. 
that you don't want to be a person who is really bad at home, but you know, you have your public face, which is really good. The husband should be someone who is even better at home than he is outside. Even better at home than he is when he's in front of a, an audience, you know, like where he sort of might present that he's really good, but he should be better, even better than that in himself at home. And that's what we should be striving for as men in our, in our marriages. And even more than that, we should be striving that when we're alone and no one sees us except Allah, we're even better than what we are with our families. And that, wallah, like, I, I, don't, I don't say to you that that's something that I've, uh, I, even, I don't even claim a tenth of that for myself. But I really think it's a beautiful thing to aim for. It's a beautiful goal to have that you would like it as a man to be better with your family than you are in public and to be better alone when no one sees you except Allah than you are with your family. And that would be a sign of, of a person's ikhlas and a sign of the fact that a person is not a person or intahakuha, a people, like the Prophet mentioned, a, a people, a group of people, when they are alone with what Allah made haram, they fall into it, meaning nobody sees them except Allah, they don't feel shy to fall into any kind of haram. So that's not how the person uh, should be. Qalat al-thalitha, the third one, she said, Zawji al-ashannaq, in antiq utallaq, wa in askut u'allaq. She said, my husband is al-ashannaq. Al-ashannaq is the one who is tall, but that, that, that his height doesn't benefit him anything. Like, so it could be lanky, but it could also be in his stature. You know, like he, he walks around like a big tall man, you know, he's, he's got maybe pride. But generally, even she's mentioning his height, he's really, really tall and lanky, but she doesn't mention anything good about it. Ashannak's not a nice way of saying, oh, he's really tall, you know, like he's tall and handsome or something like that. It's not really nice. It's like, oh, he's tall in a negative way, like you would say, oh, lanky, you know, excessively tall. He's lanky. Or he's in his stature, in the way that he behaves, you know, like, he behaves like that, like he walks around like he's 10 feet tall. But the key point I want to hear, want to focus on here is the statement in antiq utallaq. If I say anything, he'll divorce me. And if I'm silent, u'allaq, he will leave me hanging. And that is the case of many men. So we want to reverse that and get the characteristic of the ideal husband is he's not quick to divorce his wife and he's not quick with the talaq. Some people have got the talaq on rapid fire. Everything that goes wrong in a marriage, talaq, talaq, talaq. He said talaq so many times, it's not even a matter of three times anymore. Like it's just the word comes out of his mouth. Oh, I was angry. I didn't expect it. I wasn't thinking. Some of the mashayikh said it doesn't count. And you ask him, how many times have you been through that angry talaq? And he says, more than I can count. It's really sad that somebody should be like that. That they have rapid fire with the talaq, 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 everything. She can't speak without him saying talaq or without him getting angry. You know, like this, that we talked about how he should be gentle and how he should be uh, we mentioned that he shouldn't be quick to get angry. He should be halim. Inna fiqa qislatayn yuhibbuhum Allah al-hilm wal-ana. Having gentleness and not getting angry quickly and taking things slowly. So he is the opposite. Her husband, she said, if I say anything, he's going to divorce me. So any complaint, so the wife comes, she says, look, I'm struggling. I'm not so happy. Talaq, straight away, divorce. So that's obviously a negative characteristic. The positive characteristic is he's not quick to say that word. He doesn't throw the divorce around and he doesn't throw the threats of the divorce around. So he's not one who says, if you say this, I'll divorce you. Say this, I'll divorce you. Say this, I'll divorce you. He's not got the threat of divorce all the time. And she says, when I'm silent, because you might give her advice and say, well, if your husband's like that, just you know, don't say anything then. And if I'm silent, he leaves me hanging. He 
leaves her like something suspended. And it's exactly like the English phrase, left me hanging. It just left me suspended, not like she's not a wife, nor is she divorced. So it's not like if she's silent, he treats her well, or he treats her like a good wife. It's if she's silent, he doesn't treat her like a wife, nor does he let her marry someone else. And that is from the worst characteristics you can get in a husband. That he leaves his wife kalmu'allaqa, as though she is hanging. You know, she's between the ceiling and the floor. Like she's not standing on, she's not like, uh, she's not in one place and she's not in the other place. She's just hanging there, like stuck. He doesn't treat her like a wife, nor does he divorce her. So in this, it would be more merciful if he's so unhappy with her, for him to divorce her. Let her marry someone else. Let her have a happy life. Why should she be left and she's not a wife, nor is she a divorcee? She's just left in suspense. Kalmu'allaqa, in suspense like that. She's not one, she's not the other. That's if she's silent. If she speaks, then he throws the divorce, either the threat of the divorce or he gives uh, he gives the divorce. Qalat al-Rabi'ah, the fourth one said, Zawji kalayli tihama, la harrun wa la qur, wa la makhafa wa la sa'ama. She said, my husband is like the night of tihama. Tihama is what you call the area between the sea and the mountains, and it's particularly usually refers to the area of uh, south of Hejaz towards Yemen, the web between the Red Sea and the mountains, the coast of the Red Sea and the mountains. And she says, my husband is like the Knights of Tihama. And he's very mu'tadil. He's just, he's balanced. Now, sometimes you could take that as a complaint. There are people who mention that could be a complaint. She's just saying like, you know, there's no... There's no passion, there's no bad treatment, it's just, you know, like that. It's just like that. It's just kind of neutral. But that's not, I mean, the, in general, the explanation of the hadith and the shurrah who covered the hadith, they said this is praise. She's not criticizing him, she's praising him. And she's saying that he is mu'tadil, he's balanced. He's balanced. La harrun wa la qur. He's not hot or cold. So he doesn't get, you know, it's, he's not uh, really angry with her and, you know, shouting and screaming and temper. And he's not cold with her because some husbands, when they are, uh, when they are, let's say, uh, not angry or not emotional or not passionate, they're cold. Just keep away. You know, like, yeah, he doesn't get angry with me, but he doesn't talk to me either. He doesn't get angry with me, he doesn't talk to me either. But here is, la har wa la qur. He's not hot and he's not cold, meaning he's not overly sort of angry, aggressive, uh, you know, what whatever that might be. And he's not distant and cold. He's balanced and he's fair and he's just. And we've already talked about fairness. We talked about the statement of Allah Azawajal. فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا فَوَاحِدَةً أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ And we spoke about that ayah in Surah An-Nisa. We talked about how you can take from that that the person is a person who fears Allah with regard to justice, being just between his family. So here, being just and being balanced. You know, it's not too hot, not too cold. Just in the middle. She said, وَلَا مَخَافَةً I'm not scared of him. So I've got no, I'm not like, I've got nothing to be scared of. So she can, he's approachable. He's not aggressive. He doesn't throw the talaq around. Wala sa'ama, some of the scholars said is al-malal. He's not, he doesn't bore me. And that would be a response if people said that it was a negative and said that she's just saying, well, he's kind of just, you know, in the middle. It's not very exciting. He's not too bad. He's just, you know, right in the middle. But actually here, La Sa'ama would indicate that she means, I'm not, I'm not bored. I'm not, I've got no complaints 
w with him and I'm not scared. I've got no fear and I've got no complaints. Qalatil khamisa zawji in dakhala fahid wa in kharaja asid wa la yas'alu amma ahid. Again, some of the scholars took this to be positive and some of them took it to be negative. So let's look at it in the light of it being if it were to be if it were to be positive if it were to be positive so she said my husband when he comes in the house fahid he behaves like a leopard he behaves like a leopard and when he goes out he's like a lion and he doesn't ask about the agreements or what has been agreed he doesn't ask about what has been agreed so if we take it positive when he comes in fahid when he comes in fahid so this is that he's playful with his wife he's friendly with her he's got good manners with her and he gives her you know he he's kind of like i would say one of the one of the things we could take is playful friendly kind that's if you look at it in a positive way he's playful he's friendly he's kind and if you look at the prophet sallallahu and how much time he used to give to his family and how he used to care for uh, Aisha radiallahu anha and his, his other wives and their needs and for example we have the, the hadith regarding the Abyssinians who were throwing the spears in the masjid and how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi took Aisha out and he gave her time so he, he was, you know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to, used to be friendly with his family. We talk about how the Prophet ﷺ raced Aisha uh, twice and one time she won and then after that he won and she, he said that this is for that and so on. This is all that kind of playful and kind and great behavior with the family. وَإِنْ خَرَجَ أَسِدْ And when he goes out, he's brave. And that actually shows you that if you're going to take this positively, one of the beautiful things is to compare the lion to the leopard. So the leopard here uh, is the one that is playful and soft and kind and the, uh, the asset, the lion is the one who's brave and you know is fearful uh, and uh, brave and casts fear into, uh, into his enemies. How we, the man should have both of those qualities but where should he have them? Where should he have those qualities? He shouldn't be the Asad in the house. He shouldn't be the lion in the house where he's roaring at his family. You know, he's uh, scary to his family. They're scared of him. That he's, uh, you know, he behaves like the lion. That's not praiseworthy. The praiseworthy thing is that when he goes out of the house, you know, in terms of his his uh, life outside of the home. He's very brave. He has an excellent reputation. He has a, a heiba. He has a presence in front of people. But when it comes to his family, he's really relaxed and playful and really gentle and kind. So that's a, a really nice, uh, if you like, comparison between the two, between إِذَا دَخَلَ فَهِدْ وَإِذَا خَرَجَ أَسِدْ That's if we take it. In, uh, in the positive. وَلَا يَسْأَلُ عَمَّا أَحِدْ And he doesn't ask about what has been agreed, meaning he doesn't give his wife a hard time over what he's agreed with her. He doesn't give her a hard time. Like say to her, look, I told you to do this and I told you to do this and I told you to do this. So he is مسامح. He's easy going. He is سمح. Easy going and relaxed about things. He doesn't give his wife a hard time. I told you to do this. I told you to do that. So if we look at it from a positive point of view, those are the points we can take. He's playful, kind, friendly with his family. When he goes out, he's brave, honorable, noble, with a great, you know, with a great, his, his reputation and the way he behaves in front of the people and the people give him that position. And when it comes to asking his family to do things, he doesn't burden them too much. If we take it in the negative, we can also take it in the negative. إِنْ دَخَلَ فَهِدْ وَإِنْ خَرَجَ أَسِدْ وَلَا يَسْأَلُ عَمَّا أَحِدْ If we take it in the negative, then some of the scholars mean said that the leopard is the one that sleeps at home all the time. 
So he goes home and just goes to sleep. And some of them said that, uh, any other things, but we'll take here that, you know, it's a negative. Yani. For example, the man that sleeps in the home all the time, or the man who makes demands from his family, but he, he doesn't care for their needs. He doesn't care for their needs. And وَلَا يَسْعَلُ عَمَّا عَاهِدْ And he doesn't ask about what has been promised or agreed could mean that he doesn't care about the house. He doesn't care about the house. doesn't care what's going on in the house. I don't care what's going on in the house. I don't care if you've got food in the cupboards or you haven't got food in the cupboards. I don't care if you've got money to buy things or not. I don't care if you're happy or not. I don't care if the kids are misbehaving or not. He doesn't care about what's going on in his house. So if we take it positive, we took the positive points. If we take it negative, then perhaps we can say that the negatives would be coming home and just being asleep all the time. Like just not even, or coming home and just making demands of his family, but not actually taking care of their needs. And likewise, that he doesn't care about what's happening in the house. Look, the house is your problem. Don't, don't talk to me about what's going on in the house. He doesn't care about it. So that's again a negative and we would want the ideal husband to be the opposite of that. He cares about what's in the house. He cares about his family's needs. He's friendly, he's playful with them. And he comes home and of course he's gonna come home sometimes and sleep, but he comes home and he's not someone who is disconnected from the house or disconnected from the family. We're gonna continue the explanation of the hadith in the next episode inshallah ta'ala, because it is a long hadith and we're still talking about the characteristics of the ideal husband. That's what Allah made easy to mention and Allah knows best. Was salatu was salam ala bin Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.